In our previous presentation, we learned what is dependent nested loop, and through an example, we learned how to find the time complexity of dependent nested loop. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss some more examples of dependent nested loops, and we will learn how to find their time complexities. So, let's get started with this lecture, and let's see what are the topics. The topic of this lecture is. Time complexity of dependent nested loops. In this lecture, we will discuss some more examples of dependent nested loops. So let's proceed. Here is the example. Can we say this is the dependent nested loop structure? First of all, we can say this is the nested loop structure because at least one loop is within another loop in this structure. This for loop is within this for loop, and this for loop is within this for loop. So clearly, this is the nested loop structure. Also, this is the dependent nested loop structure because in this for loop, we can observe the loop variable j is dependent on the loop variable i. The loop variable j, which is the inner loop variable, depends on the outer loop variable i. As it can be observed in this statement, this is the conditional statement, and we are using variable i here. This means variable j is dependent on variable i. Hence, this for loop depends on this for loop. Also, we can observe this for loop depends on this for loop because in this conditional statement, we are using variable j, which is the outer loop variable. So the inner loop variable k of this for loop depends on the outer loop variable j of this for loop. So this for loop depends on this for loop. So this entire structure is dependent nested loop structure. Now, how do we find the time complexity of a dependent nested loop structure? We know whatever the loop we consider. We always need to find the frequency count of the innermost instruction, and this will give us the time complexity of the entire loop. The innermost instruction in this loop is x equal to x plus one. We need to determine its frequency count. The total frequency count of this instruction will give the time complexity of this entire loop. In order to determine the frequency count of this instruction, we need to analyze for each iteration of this outermost loop how the inner loops behave. So, for each iteration of this outer loop, and this means for each value of i, we need to analyze how the inner loop behaves, and in this way we can find the frequency count. Of this instruction, x equal to x plus one. Now let's see how to do the analysis of these type of loops. We know in the iteration number one, the value of i is one, and one is therefore compared with n. This is the conditional statement: i is replaced by one. Can we say one is less than or equal to n? Let us suppose one is less than n. Therefore, the condition is satisfied, and hence this for loop will execute. And in this for loop, j will receive values from one to one because i will be replaced by one, and one is therefore compared with one. One is equal to one. The condition is satisfied, so the loop will run one time. After this, j becomes two. And two is not less than one. Therefore, the condition is not satisfied, and hence this loop will run only one time. So, for i equal to one, j will receive values from one to one, or we can say j will receive only one value, which is one, and therefore this for loop will run just one time. And what about this for loop? In this for loop, we can observe k is also initialized to one. And k is compared with j, and k is incremented by one. Here the comparison is with j, and we know j has received only one value, which is one. Therefore, j will be replaced by one in this conditional statement, 
and hence this loop will also run one time because k is initialized to 1 and for k equal to 1 this condition is satisfied but for k equal to 2 this condition is not satisfied hence this loop will also run only one time so k will receive values from 1 to 1 or we can say k will receive only one value which is 1 so clearly for i equal to 1 this loop will run one time and hence this statement will also run just one time so it is clear the frequency count of this instruction is 1 and that too for i equal to 1 now let's see what happens when i is equal to 2 we know after this i is incremented by 1 which makes it 2 after this 2 is compared with n let's say 2 is less than n therefore the condition is satisfied hence we will go inside and this loop will execute in this loop we can observe j will receive values from 1 to 2 because this time the value of i is 2 so for j equal to 1 the condition is satisfied we will go inside and execute this loop and then j is incremented by 1 and j becomes 2 then 2 is compared with 2 and 2 is equal to 2 therefore the condition is once again satisfied and the inner loop will execute so it is clear that this for loop will execute two times and hence j will receive values from 1 to 2 so for i equal to 2 j will receive values from 1 to 2 now how the inner loop behaves for j equal to 1 the inner loop will run only one time for j equal to 1 because if we replace j by 1 here in the conditional statement 1 is compared with 1 1 is equal to 1 the condition is satisfied the next time k is incremented by 1 which makes it 2 so 2 is compared with 1 but 2 is not less than 1 therefore the condition is not satisfied hence this loop will run only one time for j equal to 1 so k will receive values from 1 to 1 which means k will receive only one value which is 1 and what happens to this loop when j is equal to 2 if j is equal to 2 then this loop will run two times it is quite clear therefore for j equal to 2 k will receive values from 1 to 2 and hence this loop will run two times so one thing is clear when j is equal to 1 this loop will run one time and hence this statement will also run one time and if j is equal to 2 then this loop will run two times and hence this statement will also run two times so the total frequency count of this instruction is 1 plus 2 this instruction will execute 1 plus 2 times for i equal to 2 i would like to recall this once again that frequency count refers to how many times an instruction will execute the total frequency count of this instruction for i equal to 2 is 1 plus 2 this means this statement will run 1 plus 2 times for i equal to 2 now what happens in case of i equal to 3 i is again incremented by 1 which makes it 3 then 3 is compared with n can we say 3 is less than n let's say it is true so now we need to execute this loop this loop will run three times this time because i is equal to 3 this means j will receive values from 1 to 3 so for i equal to 3 j will receive values from 1 to 3 and we know for j equal to 1 this inner loop will execute one time this is what we saw so for j equal to 1 k will receive values from 1 to 1 or we can say k will receive 1 for j equal to 2 we saw that k will receive values from 1 to 2 so for j equal to 2 k will receive values from 1 to 2 and for j equal to 3 k will receive values from 1 to 3 because if we replace j by 3 here then for the first time 1 is compared with 3 then 2 is compared with 3 then 3 is compared with 3 so this loop will run a total of 3 times so for j equal to 3 this loop will run 3 times so one thing is clear this statement will run 1 plus 2 plus 3 times and this is the case for i equal to 3 
for i equal to 3 this statement will run 1 plus 2 plus 3 times and hence the frequency count of this statement is 1 plus 2 plus 3. We can clearly observe a pattern here for i equal to 1 this inner statement will run one time for i equal to 2 this statement will run 1 plus 2 times for i equal to 3 this statement will run 1 plus 2 plus 3 times for i equal to 4 this statement will run 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 times and this will continue up to i equal to n for which j will receive values from 1 to n this is clear and this means this loop will run n times and therefore this statement will execute 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n times. So for i equal to n this statement will run these many times. So we got the frequency count of this instruction for each value of i. So for each iteration of the outermost for loop we obtained the frequency count of this instruction. Now we need to calculate the total frequency count of this instruction by adding all the frequency counts so obtained and this will give us the time complexity. So let's do this now. The total frequency count of this instruction is 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to 1 plus 2 plus and so on up to n. Now we need to add all these values. We can observe here that this is the sum of first n natural numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n is the sum of first n natural numbers. Let's say we represent this sum by x subscript n. So what can we say about this sum? This is sum of first three natural numbers. We can represent this by x subscript 3. What about this sum? This is sum of first two natural numbers. We can represent this by x subscript 2. And this value can be represented by x subscript 1 as this value represents the sum of one natural number. So, this sum is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on up to xn. So, this can be written as summation of i equal to 1 up to n xi. And what is xi? xi represents the sum of first i natural numbers. So, we can rewrite this as i into i plus 1 divide by 2. Recall the formula of sum of first n natural numbers. It is n into n plus 1 divide by 2. Here we know xi represents the sum of first i natural numbers. Therefore, we can replace n by i and hence we will get i into i plus 1 divide by 2. This is the formula of sum of first i natural numbers. Now we can bring 1 by 2 outside this summation as this is just a constant. It is not i. Therefore, we can rewrite this sum as 1 by 2 summation of i equal to 1 up to n i into i plus 1. This i into i plus 1 can be written as i square plus i. So we can rewrite this summation as 1 by 2 summation of i equal to 1 up to n i square plus i. Now writing summation of i equal to 1 up to n i square plus i is same as writing summation of i equal to 1 up to n i square plus summation of i equal to 1 up to n i. So we can rewrite this as 1 by 2 times summation of i equal to 1 up to n i square plus summation of i equal to 1 up to n i. Now what does this summation mean? Here we have summation of i equal to 1 up to n i square. So we can replace i by 1, we will get 1 square. Then i by 2, we will get 2 square. Then i by 3, we will get 3 square. We can replace i by n and this will give us n square. So this is the sum of square of n natural numbers. 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square and so on up to n square. And we know the formula for calculating the sum of squares of first n natural numbers. This is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And what about this summation? 
This summation represents the sum of first n natural numbers. We can replace i by 1, then i by 2, then i by 3, and we can replace i by n. This represents the sum of first n natural numbers, which is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on up to n. And the formula for this is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. So, this summation can be replaced by n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6, and this summation can be replaced by n into n plus 1 divided by 2. So, we can rewrite this entire thing as 1 by 2 times n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6 plus n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, we can solve this entire expression and we will get n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 6. I want you to solve that expression on your own and you will get this fraction as the result n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 6. So, this is the total frequency count of this instruction x equal to x plus 1. And from this total frequency count, we can write the time complexity. The time complexity so obtained will represent the time complexity of this entire structure. Here we can eliminate the constants. We can eliminate 1, 2 and 6. So, we will be left with n into n into n, which is equal to n cube. n cube is the dominating term of this fraction. And hence, the time complexity is theta of n cube. So, theta of n cube is the time complexity of this entire dependent nested loop structure. I hope now it is clear how to find the time complexity of dependent nested loop structure. Now, let me give one more dependent nested loop structure. But this time, I want you to find the time complexity of this structure. So, do this on your own and post your answers in the comment section. So, we are done with this topic and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends. This is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.